Hey everyone, uh, we're doing that Q&A with uh, Arena, um, Arena's player. Hey. And hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, everybody just, everybody that's listening went, whoa. <laughs> yeah, G Gothies was so, like, close to hers, and, you know, it's, it's kind of hard for me to do Arena's voice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but um, anyway, so we got some of the questions that you guys had asked on Twitter and Instagram and uh YouTube and everything, and so we're gonna answer them here. So I'll be doing, I'll be sips in the background. <laughs> um, we'll be going into arena, and Felix is here. Hello. As our trusty DM and questionnaire. Trusty DM, don't trust me. <laughs> no, 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 no. That we was don't your first trust mistake. you. Yeah, we don't trust you. But... We, should, we trust you to try to kill us. <laughs> okay, good, good, good. <laughs> As a constant. We can always depend on that. Good. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, so why don't we jump right into it? Sure, we can start with the first question. Was Irina supposed to be a joke character? Well, she certainly started off that way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was really funny, because uh, our last party TPK'd while I was on vacation. Yeah. Uh, so I got like the text while like on the train, just, hey, everyone's dead now. Uh, yeah. And I was like, okay, well, I guess we're starting something new when I come back, and I completely forgot about it. Uh, and I think you were asking for like character backstories because you were going to integrate them into mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. uh, and I hadn't, I hadn't had anything planned. <laughs> so I, I looked on my table and there was a, there was a copy of a certain book, <laughs> and I was like, starting point. <laughs> uh, but it made a really interesting sort of way to go through it because Irina's character didn't develop during her backstory. She developed during the campaign. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's really fun to like watch her character arc develop as I play her. Yeah, yeah. she was kind of a blank slate at the start. Yeah. Yeah, she was just a nothing character who was in it for herself, uh, super bratty. <laughs> uh, and oh, so, yeah, a little bit. Just, just a bit. Uh, and yeah, she. It, it's cool. I let the character run away from me, and that's what made her into some. A character that I really like to bring up. It actually out. leads right into the next question, which is how did you go about developing Arena's character? Okay. Uh, well, I developed her character, again, from the thing on the coffee table. Uh, but <laughs> it it was nice because it gave me a launching point for certain characteristics. Uh, when I developed Arena's character, I wanted to sort of bring in some of that origin. Yeah. Uh, so that's what made her sort of quirky at the beginning and sort of selfish. Uh, and during the course of like meeting Sips and Gothy, uh, she sort of learned what boundaries were. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's sort of like, you know, watching a kid grow up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Sips, from your perspective, did it look like a kid growing up? No. <laughs> How does it look to you? It looked like somebody I constantly had to fight with. <laughs> Yeah, there was a lot of arguments it was and an bickering. It, I mean, yeah, we had a lot of queries, but at the end, we managed to see eye to eye. And, and we became friends. Frenemies. Acquaintances. Business partners. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's say that. Let's I, I think that works a bit better. Yeah, let's cap it at that. Mm -hmm, so. mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, talking about frenemies and business partners, Irina, why did you flick the berry into Sips' mouth? Listen, the party was bumping, everyone was having fun except for Sips. And you know, everyone who was partaking in those Blood Moon berries were having fun, so... Okay, I didn't plan on having it in his mouth, though. Yeah, you fucking... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hold on a second. Now, this whole fucking shit happened, and... Well, I mean, it definitely was not what we anticipated. And I was trying to get rid of them because it's like, come on the fuck on! Like, these things are deadly. They're, they almost got us killed last time. So yeah. Mm -hmm. But people were having fun. You thought it would be a joke, but it didn't turn out to be a no, joke. No, I thought I'd just flick it at your face and you'd go ham on people. And then you rolled a natural 20. Yeah, and then I rolled a natural 20 and it... <laughs> You went ham on people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then everything kind of went a little fuzzy. Just a bit. Yeah, but... But it, it, was, it was going to be funny. <laughs> it just had a different aftermath. It's not always me trying to kill these people. They do it to themselves. <laughs> I don't know about that! <laughs> oh, it's mostly me, though. I, I think it's 75-25. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, that's that. That's fine. Let's go with that. <laughs> Um, so people have also been wondering, Arena, what are your powers? Well, number one, I'm a magical girl, but I don't have a spell list. <laughs> uh, so that's a wild ride to go around. Uh, my powers are actually sort of more combat oriented. Uh, I'd say I'm more of the DPS of the party. Because mm -hmm. I hit often, but I don't really hit hard. My big thing is that whenever I transform, everyone gets blinded for a round. Yeah, there's like a chance that we all fucking lose our lose our footing and just blindedness. Just straight up, it's like the solar flare from Dragon Ball. We've definitely been <laughs> blinded a couple times, just because of the failed saves. <laughs> I think at a certain point I started telling you guys. You started to warn us, at least. At least. Besides from that, uh, I mean, technically there are a couple spells that I can cast, but that's sort of like linking rings that I bought from Mr. Wizardly to my magical girl power source and channeling it through that. Yeah, I mean, don't you have, like, um, different elemental powers or something like that? Yeah, so it's really cool. Whenever I use a different elemental power, my costume changes color. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I got my flame style, which lets me use heat metal, which is really great for, like, knocking people's swords out of their hands. And there's my water style, which changes to uh, chill metal, which, same effect, I guess. There's my wind style, which lets me create a wall of force, and that really helps when... Can't you fly with that? Yes. Yeah, uh, you can fly with that. Perfect maneuverability flight, which, thinking about it now, maybe I shouldn't have had until later. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, there's definitely a reason why uh, the Magical Girl class is a little P, and we had to nerf it a bit. Yeah, but mm -hmm. it was very fair. Yeah. There's... Listen, I can't show my final form right off the bat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then there's my land style, which gives me uh, an AC boost. Mm -hmm. uh, but I can't use the, any of them at the same time, uh, and it takes a full round to swap out between them. Yeah, yeah, and even then, it's we had to balance a lot of stuff. Yeah, oh, yeah. Was a lot of it was there. a test run. Like to be honest, the magical girl stuff was very much a test. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. There was also like this cool version of detect magic where like I could blink and like magic colors would swirl depending on the uh, school that was about. Oh yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, that was a cool one. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it was a different version of detective, detect magic. It was it was a cool RP version of it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I think it was because we said giving you detect magic would have been too overpowered, so we told you just the school, and that's all you got. Yeah, exactly. It's like you can tell where like the the origin of it, but you can't tell what yeah. it is. Yeah. So yeah. And if I forget the color of the school, then that's, that's bad for me. Yeah, that's on you. <laughs> that's on you. Okay, so Carson. Did Dingo draw your character exactly as you imagined she would look, or are there some changes you would make? To be completely honest, like, Dingo nailed it. Uh, Aww. Well, it was good. Uh, it was really nice, because uh, I think I designed her character, like, three quarters of the way through the campaign, I think was when I finally had a final version of her. Yeah. The, the goal was always to make her, like, this sort of, like, out of place fashionista in the wilds of nowhere. <laughs> and what was really nice is I think my version of her transformed thing was really boring. She just got like a heavy coat. <laughs> yeah, I upped it a bit. Yeah, she, you, you cranked it from like a six to an eight. <laughs> <laughs> the whole point was to reverse the trope of the magical girl doing the panty dance into like the sailor outfit. Yeah. Uh, and I think having the more extravagant costume was a better turn than getting a coat. <laughs> yeah. I enjoyed that. And I was also, when I was designing that stuff, because, um, you know, during the campaign, we didn't exactly know what she looked like. We were just kind of playing and having yeah. fun. Um, and then we kind of, like, finalized as more and more I was doing animation, and I had decided that if I was going to do this, if I was going to make, like, a really cool magical girl outfit, I was going to pull from animes you like. Mm -hmm. Because I wanted to, like, take tribute to that and put that in the kind of the mix. Because it's supposed to be kind of like, Arena's supposed to be kind of like a giant anime trope. Oh, yeah. Like, it, it's really cool. She, she has a whole bunch of tropes that she follows and a whole bunch of ones that she defies. Yeah, yeah. She's, she's her own person, and I wanted to make mm -hmm. that very clear. And then I kind of like, like, I think from your previous designs of her, it's very, very similar. Because I, like, oh, yeah. you had drawn her, and then I was like, okay, well, I'm going to cartoon it. Because I have to draw her, like, a million times over. Exactly. So and... I had to really simplify her. Yeah. Yeah, and it's a lot easier to draw a romper than a 
a two-piece shirt and sor- uh, short set. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and I mean, the romper just made sense. The romper actually looks kind of cool. Yeah, and then plus with the boots and, mm-hmm. and the shoes and stuff like that. So, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed that I'm still doing it. Okay. Oh, absolutely. I don't think there's anywhere you can go wrong at this point. <laughs> As the person who can't draw, I think she looks fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks. So on that same topic, how does it feel seeing a campaign and a character you're involved in being animated, as well as being received by so many people thanks to a fellow party member? Honestly, I mean, it was, like, really cool when Dingo told me that she was going to be animating it, and then just to see it just instantly, like, smack, everyone's watching it, was a wild ride from the sidelines. Yeah, it was uh, surreal, almost. Like, it's like, really? So many people like this stuff? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm glad that you guys are open to it. Because I definitely, uh, I originally kind of was like, I hope this works. <laughs> <laughs> I was really excited as a DM to actually get some outside feedback. Like, yeah, to really mm-hmm. see, okay, my style of DMing, I know you guys loved it, mm-hmm. but is this something generally, uh, can that this can be generally appreciated in the D&D community? And I was happy that it was. <laughs> well, it's definitely like a unique style because uh, so many campaigns are heavily combat focused and rules book focused. Mm-hmm. And I think just sort of, you know, derailing that a little bit is a niche that's not as explored. Yeah. And yeah. I like using it to keep you guys on your toes. Oh, absolutely. Like having a combat encounter that forces you to role play along with it is something that you're really like, I find as a trademark of your style. Definitely. Aww, thank you. Definitely. Uh, but just seeing the campaign out and fleshed out, I watch it with you guys every time it goes out, and I remember stuff that I forgot about the campaign. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I always pray, I'm like, oh god, I hope I got this right, because none of this is really written down as much, because like, we have your notes, but like... My very shoddy notes? Yeah, yep. but they're very much like, like, there's sections where I'm like, you didn't write any of that down, and he's like, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> it was just the week that he forgot to write yeah. down the notes, and it's like, uh, but... I'm better nowadays. Now I have nice, like, almost diary-style notes. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. But back then, I didn't. But really, like, um, being able to do this and then still having you guys like it is important to me. So. Yeah, well, and again, like, just from the sidelines, it's just crazy to see something, just to address the other part of the question, mm-hmm. uh, just to see something that you participated in Having people enjoy something that you're not directly giving into, mm-hmm. I, I guess that's the way that I would put it's it. Just like your raw, yeah, raw like person almost coming out. It, it's interesting, and uh, I have never received fan art before. <laughs> well, that you have. It, it's so. crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sips, I need you uh, to not listen to this question for just a minute, but uh, what? Irina, most magical girls have a talking animal mascot. Uh, is Sips doing well as yours? Well, you know, most of them are supposed to be cute, and I feel that he's lacking in that department. I'm sorry, what? Listen, it's a it's a trope that magical girls have an animal companion, and you know, Jawbone is gothies, so... No. We're kind of narrowing it down by process of elimination. No. And you guys did spend an awful lot of time together. And not only that, I mean, you're an animal, and you're my companion. Mm-hmm. Remember the last person that, that, that associated me as just kind of like an animal? She's dead now, so... No, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then we'll just call you a companion. <sighs> I'm an I'm a associate, and I think of anything your animal companion would be Abby. Well, I'm hoping that she's upgraded to something more than that in the future, maybe. I don't know, but... <laughs> oh, she's above sips? <laughs> I mean, Excuse you said me? that, not me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, I... Fuck I'm no. just, if I could kill the DM, I would. <laughs> From a marketing perspective, you're a really good animal companion. You're very marketable. I swear to God. <laughs> if I could kill you. Congratulations. And it YouTube. wouldn't cause problems in the storyline, I would. Congrats, YouTube. Sips now hates all of you. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. I'm not going to tell you who asked the question. That's for their safety. Um, yeah, you better well, run. Well, you know, this is totally on topic, as the next question is, how does it feel to be threatened and attacked by Sips on a regular basis? I mean, it's really interesting, the process of learning how to sleep with one eye open. Like, you're only half asleep, but you're also completely aware of somebody trying to kill you at every possible if moment? I wanted to kill you, you would already be dead. If you wanted to kill me, I wouldn't be here right now. Precisely. So, 
you know, just stop referring to me as an animal companion is a, is a pretty good I'm tip. gonna blame that one on YouTube, okay? I, I think that's a fair compromise. Yeah, fuck YouTube. I was answering the question. <laughs> fair, <laughs> Sip fair. says that, not me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, that, that kind of leads into something interesting. How does it, just to break down the question a bit further, how does it feel to roleplay somebody who wants to kill somebody in the party? Yeah. Uh, Without actually, you know, yeah. committing? No, yeah. it's it's kind of like a funny, kind of like, you know when you go up to somebody and you almost smack <laughs> them, but then you're just like putting your hair back slowly and going like, oh. Uh, yeah, I, um, I have this constant kind of like almost, almost killing arena kind of thing in the back of my head. Mm -hmm. Just always keeping, you know, a plan yeah. B, like a plan kill arena in the back yeah, of your mind. Yeah, yeah. Look, it's... The way I look at it is that if I killed you, I wouldn't have the ability to have somebody as a meat shield. So, <laughs> I, it's, it's kind of like, you're better to the group alive than dead. Because you're also a fighter, so... I'm the one who takes the opponents down. Hey, I I take people down all the time if I don't fuck everyone over. But um rare. I mean, when you take people, I'm good at taking specific people down. You're good at taking everyone. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's fair. <laughs> well, that's just what happens when you're in a party with me. So <laughs> this is what you get. That's the Sips experience. Mm -hmm. All you can really do is try to make most of the collateral damage <laughs> part of the enemy. <laughs> It's a cone that you just have to aim. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I love wild magic. Mm, I don't. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> so, Irina, what do you like to do when you're not on crazy adventures? Um, well, number one, I like creating clothes. I'm really hoping that I get my own line someday. There's some crazy stuff in the billowing wilds. <laughs> Sheep. <laughs> not that no, we're not talking, we're not about, talking the about the sheep. No, but they're ever present. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are. And you know, I like hanging out with Abby. It's always interesting foraging with Gothy. Sometimes I hang out with Sips. Oh, okay. We need more details on that. How do you hang out with Sips? Carefully. <laughs> mm hmm. Um, what, do you, what do you guys like to do in your spare time together? You know what? We like to go to the spa. Okay, that'll that one I will say. That's true. Actually, like the, the entire Fool's Gold party really enjoys their spot time. I think we've been to like a total of like three or four uh -huh. different... Sp Every time we kill somebody or or take down uh, a big regime or something, it's spa time. Absolutely. We need to refresh after a hard month of adventuring. Mm -hmm. After all the murder and all the bloods on our hands. Mm -hmm. And I, I guess that's the thing that Sips and I agree with to hang out with. Is the spa. Yeah. But yeah. usually we're pretty good having a distance. Yeah. I think it's safer for everyone that way. Mm hmm. <laughs> mm hmm. I mean, maybe someday we'll be friends. I'm kind of hoping that. Yeah. If you play your cards right. Nothing friends like, aren't really in my repertoire. Nothing like a weekend at the Demon Hot Springs just to bond <laughs> a little bit. We're not going into that. It's a neutral zone. Yeah. It is a neutral zone. It was a nice place. Um, so, the question is kind of, well, this question is kind of to all of us, is do we use theme songs for the characters? And specifically, what's Irina's theme song, if so? Mm -hmm. uh, well, I think during most of the campaign, uh, we used Tomorrow is Mine from Bayonetta 2. Yeah, yep. that was the one that we usually associated and with. And it's her. funny, because Gothi's, it, it all came up when Gothi's player was just was joking around saying, oh, she's a magical girl, you know, she must have like a Bayonetta theme song. <laughs> yeah. It's like, well, you know what? <laughs> Bayonetta does have a theme song. Nowadays, though, I think I've shifted it more towards, uh, there's this one song called Time of Victory from uh, Kamen Rider x uh, and it's just sort of like uplifting Sparkle Bob. Mm. I, I think nowadays that's what she would go with. I, I think during certain fights we've had theme songs. Just if it's really character focused. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um, I mean, in terms of the fights themselves, most were like Dark Souls mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of music. Every time you play the Witcher 3 fighting <laughs> Witcher song, Witcher 3, Hunt or Be Hunted Hunt is a or good be one. Hunt or Be Hunted song, I always have fucking PTSD. Mm -hmm. It's always just like, oh no, not this shit again, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, shit gets real when I put that song on. Yeah. 
I think there was one fight that we used You Say Run from My Hero Academia. Yes. That got really, really hype. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that was, was really good. good. It, was, it was screaming at the table. That was a good time. Yeah. Yeah. My theme song, like, Sips' theme song is, um, I think it's called Brick and Mortar. It's by Brick and Mortar, uh, Move to the Ocean. Yes. But it's like a remix. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember what the dubstep, there's like a dubstep mix. You should put these in the description. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I'll put them in the description of like what the theme songs are. Yeah. Of um, Arena and, and Sips. So, um, yeah, th those are always just so much fun. They are, and they sort of add a little personal touch to any encounter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, whenever there's like a strong character moment, you cue that music, they get all hyped up, they're mm -hmm. being awesome. That's, that's a good time. Yeah. So, uh, about Abby, how mm -hmm. did Irina and Abby meet? Uh, it was very lovely. Uh, we were going to Alchemist Quarry for the first time, and uh, I believe uh, it was in the uh, marketplace that she was a masseuse. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. uh, you know, we go to spas, we like massages. It's really nice to get a massage. And we just sort of met each other and you know she was really cool and she gave me a massage and she gave everyone a massage and she she was really nice and gave us tea afterwards and then the thing happened the the big thing the bad thing the big and mm -hmm. the accidental was, thing the accidental thing that gothy started not me <laughs> uh and yeah, i panicked and i rushed to her house and i took her out of the city uh because i was really worried about the inhabitants of the city and one of them in particular. Mm -hmm. And you know, it just sorta, that was that was our bonding moment. It was funny how I accidentally made a perfect match for Arena with, <laughs> with Abby, because Abby was this right mix of badass and cute, that kind of matched Arena's level of badass and cute. But with a personality that sort of contrasted mine, mm -hmm. that leveled me out. Mm -hmm. Well, she was more like the, like the peaceful and gentle kind of personality. So that perfectly matched. Mm -hmm. It was nice. I mean, yeah. Six. Until she, you know, hmm? accidentally stole the fucking metric. Well, it wasn't an accident as much as it was possession. Yeah. I, I don't oh, think shit. you can prevent yourself from getting possessed by the thing that made you. No, no. Yeah. And she got better afterwards. No, she got better afterwards. And I like Abby. Abby's cool. She can completely disable somebody with a, like the right pressure point. Yeah, the thing is she's like... You know, she's a uh, massage therapist, so she knows how to make you feel better and a lot worse. <laughs> she can paralyze people if she like, gets the right points. She's like the one NPC, actually. Trust. Yes. So, <laughs> Sips, At the end. Sips, what is your thought on Abby and their relationship? I mean, she's nice, but I think she's too nice. As in, we shouldn't be bringing her to these fucking war zones. <laughs> <laughs> she can handle herself, and besides, you know, we're bringing her to my home country. It's like taking her to meet my parents. Yeah. <laughs> Awkward. Uh, <laughs> Awkward story, that one. <laughs> yeah. And go great, did it. <laughs> it did. Uh, I mean. Uh, anyway, I, I think that really she's a little too innocent for all of this, but, uh, you know, to each their own. Fuck it in the end. Whatever. <laughs> that is the most Sips answer that I've that heard is today. A very Sips answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, then we have the last question, which is. Um, What's your process on making D&D characters? I always just really start with what I'm into at the time. Uh, so like, I think there was one of the D&D characters that I played. I was really into Assassin's Creed 4 at the time. Uh, so I was like, a pirate would be fun to play. Let's let's do that. Or like my most recent character, uh, Akuto. I was watching uh, Lupin Ranger versus Pat Ranger, which is like a sort of cops versus robbers kind of thing. So I thought it would be cool to make like a uh, phantom thief who's also the detective Ch uh, checking out his own case. And I start with that, I try to find something that works with that sort of move set. And recently, Hirohiko Araki wrote a book called Manga in Theory and Practice, uh, and he has a chart where there are 60 questions that you can answer to create a character's history, uh, ranging from stuff like, you know, medical processes that they've had, uh, scars, uh, upbringing, education level. Uh, that sort of helped flesh out a character, uh, and I've started using that to create a roadmap to how a character will go in terms of roleplaying. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. Cool, I've never even heard of that. Yeah, uh, if you want, I can take a picture of the uh, chart and send it to you. Sure. I'll put it in the description if yeah. you can find it. Mm -hmm. A way to do that. That's a good call. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, cool. Um, well, thanks for coming. Yeah, yeah. it's 
really nice to participate. I'm glad we finally got a chance to get you on the mic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, as the episodes progress and everything and stuff happens, we can talk more and more and, um, you know, bring you back. Absolutely. Yeah, we can do more of these. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a really good way to sort of, you know, answer any questions that might have been muddied during the, uh, that we might have to have skipped during the thing. Yeah, because that's the thing, is that unfortunately, because I have such a short period of time... And you're just one, one woman. I'm one, one, one woman! <laughs> um, there's a lot of shit I had to cut, like you saving Abby out, mm -hmm. of, out of Alchemist Core at the end. Like, I, I had to keep skipping because I hadn't even established her. Exactly. Like, no, I have to keep going. Um, so, yeah, a lot of that, but, um, yeah, sorry if we didn't get your questions, um, for this Q&A. There was a lot of great questions, we've already set some aside for the next one <laughs> if we get a chance to do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, exactly, and then when, uh, the next Q&A comes up, of course I'll post it again, and mm -hmm. you guys will see the Q, uh, the Q&A prompt, and, um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Yeah, yeah. Oh, also, one more thing, uh, now that we've introduced, uh, Arena's Transform version, mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna be doing a contest. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, uh, so now that Arena's cool form is out, uh, if you've already made any fan art or if you feel like making some, uh, just tag Dingo and I in it uh, on Twitter, Instagram, or whatever. I will put the link in the description of our Twitters. Yep, uh, and I made an Arena t-shirt. Uh, and if I'll put everyone in for a random drawing, and whoever wins, I'll send a version of that t-shirt. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. All yeah. right, so get that fan art going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, get that fan art going. And um, I'll put uh, also a pinned comment of like when it's over as well. Cause yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm doing it for a month, but since we're pre-recording this, I don't know which month that's going to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll keep you guys all up to, up to date on that. And then for anybody who's listening to this like a year or two later, sorry, the contest is over now. <laughs> Good luck next time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, well, um, uh, I think there's still one very important question from the community that we've not yet answered. I wonder what that could be. Um, and that question is, is Irina a JoJo reference? Well... <laughs>